on behalf of our two captains and 60 crew members, welcome aboard the SS Bench. You've embarked on an exciting 60-mile, four-hour cruise through time and history on a national historic landmark. A highway at sea connecting Highway 10 between Michigan and Wisconsin. At 410 feet and more than 6,000 tons, the Badger's the last coal-fired passenger steamship in the United States. Built for the railroads, the Badger was designed to carry approximately 35 rail cars, several hundred passengers, and about 30 automobiles. She was launched in 1953 in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, and joined a fleet of rail car ferries, including her sister ship, the SS Spartan. They saved the railroads time and money and created thousands of jobs in Wisconsin and in Michigan. But over time, the car ferry business began to dry up. Shippers were turning to newly developed interstate highways, and railroads were finding it cheaper to send their freight through the expanding rail yards in Chicago. To make matters worse, the aging fleet couldn't accommodate the more modern and taller rail cars. The Spartan was tied up in 1979 and would never sail again. By 1988, the Badger was the only ship still running. Most other ferries had gone to the scrapyard. Railroads began closing their terminals, tearing up tracks leading to the docks. It looked like the end of the line. But the story doesn't end here. Along comes Michigan entrepreneur Charles Conrad. He worked on the car ferries as a young man and couldn't get the old steamers, including the Badger, out of his blood. Why not preserve her heritage, but repurpose the ship for tourists and trucking industry? Well, Conrad risked everything. He bought the Badger, sent her back to the shipyards, and began a multi-million dollar renovation, which created the ship you're sailing on today, able to carry 600 passengers and 180 vehicles. Even as you arrive today, we were preparing for your voyage, including our 40 crew members who live on board. Because the Badger is powered entirely by coal, she's refueled between voyages in Manitowoc. Once all of the passengers are safely ashore, a truck backs into the car deck and fills each of the two bunkers. A conveyor system then sends the coal to the boilers, just as it did more than 60 years ago. Down below the car deck, that's where you'll find the engine and the boiler rooms. While crew members keep a close eye on the boilers, the Badger is also equipped with a multi-million dollar system that helps regulate the air-fuel mixture, extracting the greatest amount of energy while minimizing the amount of ash that's generated. Crew members routinely pull the bottom ash from the boilers and rake it into a one-of-a-kind collection system that deposits the ash in large containers up on the car deck. The ash is then offloaded in Ludington and used as an ingredient in cement. Because she's operated entirely by steam, the Badger is a complex ship with miles of pipes, fittings, valves, pumps, turbines, watertight doors, and other equipment including the new combustion controls and ash containment system to protect the environment. Even the electricity used to show this video is produced by steam. The Badger's equipped with two steam turbine generators, producing enough energy to light a small town. But the greatest amount of steam is used to power the two massive Skinner Uniflow steam engines, each nearly as tall as a three-story building. They represent the pinnacle of reciprocating steam technology, producing a total of 7,000 horsepower. When you came on board today, the engines, recognized for their true historic value, were already at work, slowly turning the propellers to hold the Badger tight against her dock. At the same time, our staffs of drivers were carefully placing up to 180 passenger cars, pickup trucks, and RVs inside the car deck. 
There's even a second level for parking toward the bow. Most motorcycles, big trucks, and oversized loads are driven aboard by their own professional drivers. Knowing where to place each vehicle and keeping the ship trim and level is an art unto itself. Water is moved in and out of large ballast tanks by steam-powered pumps in the engine room to help trim the vessel. As loading nears an end, an officer on the car deck uses a sound-powered telephone to give a 20-minute warning to the engine room and to the bridge. A watch officer on the bridge notifies the captain that the Badger is getting ready to depart. Being captain of the Badger is like no other job in America. While captains on modern ships have direct control over the engines, the Badger uses a telegraph system dating back to the 19th century. These instruments are called Chadburn engine order telegraphs. There's one for each engine and a duplicate set located down in the engine room. As we get closer to departure time, one of our chief engineers will position himself at the port side engine, while a second engineer mans the starboard engine. A third crew member, often called an oiler, stands watch between the telegraphs and answers the bells. Other crew members inspect the fires in the boilers and make final adjustments, steam pressure, water levels, and other critical settings. Back up on the car deck, the blue-colored hose carrying fresh water from the city is disconnected. Stainless steel tanks aboard the ship will supply fresh water during your journey today. The red line handling wastewater destined for local treatment plants is also disconnected. Up forward, beneath the sun deck, in the windlass or anchor room, a check is made to ensure that both of the anchors are in their stowed and their locked position. Other crew members stand by the winches that contain lines holding the Badger to her moorings. Five minutes to departure now. After a final boarding call, the officer at the stern reports when all vehicles are stored and the passengers are safely aboard. With the engines still in slow astern, the captain orders the aft mooring lines let go and to single up or reduce the number of other mooring lines to only one. Passenger ramps are pulled away. The locks, holding the stern of the ship, are thrown or pulled up and out of their slots. And the apron is raised. With all tasks completed, the officer on the car deck radios the all clear to the captain, who places the Chadburn engine order telegraphs on standby. Everyone is on station, it's time to go. The captain telegraphs instructions to the engine room, and the Badger begins to move. If the captain rings for slow ahead, a bell rings, and the repeater telegraph in the engine room signals the same command. The crew member on watch answers back, while the engineers immediately adjust the engines to follow the captain's command. This takes real skill, trust, an immediate response. The same is true up on the bridge as the captain orders his wheelman to begin the initial turn away from the dock. This ship's wheel is connected directly to the big rudder by way of drive shafts and universal joints, terminating here in the hydroelectric rudder control room directly beneath the stern. Because the Badger is not equipped with thrusters, the single line still attached to the mooring acts like a spring or a whip, helping the Badger pivot out, around, and away from the dock in Ludington. When the deck officer gives the all clear at the stern, the captain orders the remaining line to be let go. Now this is done right from the ship by pulling a pin that has been holding the line in place. Once released, the Badger is now free to begin her voyage. As she moves out into the port, the large sea gate with the Badger's name is lowered onto the car deck and won't be opened again until she nears her destination. By now, the ship's picking up speed. 
This is the sight people come to see and hear every day as the Badger makes her way past the Ludington Lighthouse and out into Lake Michigan. The captain blows the horn at this point, signaling our departure. Once in open water, the captain orders the engines to full ahead between 93 and 96 RPM. This is the speed that provides the greatest fuel efficiency and good ship handling. Satisfied that the Badger is secure, he turns command over to one of his officers, who uses modern GPS, radar, compass, and radio communications to navigate across the lake. During your voyage, other crew members have been hard at work, making your journey a relaxing and a memorable experience. From playing Badger Bingo, watching a movie, relaxing in our TV lounge, enjoying a delicious meal prepared right here in the ship's galley, entertaining your children, visiting our gift shop and museum, relaxing on deck, or taking a nap in one of our 40 private staterooms. When there are only 20 minutes left in your voyage, the captain once again assumes command and all crew members move to their stations. Engine telegraph orders are given to slow our approach and prepare for docking. As the ship enters port, she must turn around and back into her dock without the aid of thrusters or tugboats. This is a difficult maneuver, which requires great ship handling skills. At just the right moment, the captain orders the rudder hard over. Hard right. That's hard right. He also gives the command to drop the anchor. This helps keep the bow steady. As the stern begins to line up with the dock, the rudder is put into position for docking. Another officer stationed in a small pilot house at the stern, also equipped with engine order and rudder telegraphs, is given command of the Badger as the captain leaves the bridge and quickly makes his way aft. This officer has the authority to make adjustments as necessary to continue backing toward the dock. After entering the stern pilot house, the captain resumes command and completes the docking procedure. Engine commands come quickly and the response must be immediate and accurate. This takes real expertise and a lot of trust. Once the captain is satisfied that the ship has docked, he telegraphs finished with engines. He blows the ship's horn signals the crew to secure all lines, lower the apron, and close the locks. The crew below deck adjust steam pressures and other equipment for idle service. Well, your voyage has come to an end. It's time to disembark. Pick up your car and resume your journey to wherever life takes you. I know that some of you would like to have been able to tour the engine and boiler rooms but maritime rules will not allow that. However, we do hope that this behind the scenes video tour has given you a greater appreciation for the 60 crew members who operate this ship and for the SS Badger herself. Again, thank you for sailing with us and have a great day.